Hello, my name is Al Sandrick. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist for the National Weather Service Office in Jacksonville. And today we're going to talk about why Glen County storm surge, or as we call it, storm tide, is so dangerous and can be life-threatening. So what you're looking at here is a picture from the Georgia Historical Society that shows Newcastle Street on October 2nd, 1898, when a Category 4 hurricane made landfall, causing damage to buildings, but really flooding almost all of Glen County. So what this shows is historically Glen County has a history of hurricane landfall and hurricane storm surge flooding and in fact this is probably one of the earliest pictures of storm tide ever taken. Looking at modern day storm surge modeling you can see that almost all of Camden and Glen counties are covered by colors representing storm surge and this shows us the danger that all of coastal Georgia is in from hurricane storm surge. Now why is Georgia so vulnerable to storm surge and Glen County in particular? Well one of the reasons is the shape of our coastline. If you look you can see that yellow line shows the curvature of the coast that really starts at Cape Canaveral and goes all the way up to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina and really the apex of that curvature is right at Cumberland Island. So let's look at it very simply. Let's take a look at a funnel with water going down the funnel. As the water goes into the funnel, it flows down the sides and into the very narrow opening down at the bottom. This is analogous to the shape of our coastline. All the curvature of that coastline pushes the water toward the apex or toward the base of the funnel, which is again somewhere near Cumberland Island. If we look at the funnel, think about it, as the water flows down the sides and goes towards the apex, it starts to fill up the funnel because the water can't go out as quickly as it's going through that very, very narrow hole. Well, the same thing happens with our coastline. As all that water gets pushed toward the apex, it begins to pile up and it piles up onto the coast. Now, another factor is the bathymetry that's offshore or the size of our continental shelf. We have a very wide and relatively shallow continental shelf. So as the water goes on top of that continental shelf, it has a tendency to pile up or grow taller. That's also another reason why the Gulf Stream is located where it is and why it is so far offshore from coastal Georgia, because it flows along the eastern edge of the continental shelf. Now, what we're looking at is a digital elevation map, which was done by LIDAR, and it basically gives us an idea of what the uh, Glen County topography looks like. And if you can see, there's some bluffs in the orange and brownish colors, but there's a lot of areas that are in yellow and in green, which represents marshy areas or very, very low areas where waterways are moving through. One of the things those waterways did for us was it was a driver of the economy in Glen County. If you think about it historically, we grew rice in Glen County along the Altamaha River, Hwaffle Broadfield Plantation, Hampton Plantation, Retreat Plantation, and the conditions that are conducive to growing rice are also conducive to creating large storm surges. Think about some of the places where we talk about high storm surge. Vietnam, Bangladesh, the Philippines, coastal Georgia, South Carolina, and Louisiana. All areas where we used to grow rice. So looking back at our digital elevation map, take a look at some of the rivers in particular. How about the Turtle River? Looking at the Turtle River, we can see it goes west of Brunswick, then past Interstate 95, and cuts very, very deeply into the county. This river becomes essentially a highway for the storm surge to push into the western parts of the county and into inland areas. You can see these lines showing the main pass the storm surge would take coming past the city of Brunswick and over the city of Brunswick, westward into the uh, western part of the counties and Buffalo Creek Swamp. Now, after that storm surge goes down the rivers, it's going to spread out through all the tributaries that come off of them, spreading out over the flatter lands of the counties and flooding areas extremely inland, including towns like Everett and Thalman. So this is a situation if we have a strong tropical storm making landfall in the area, and you could see that we start to see flooding in the city of Brunswick along US 17, along the F. Torres Causeway, going into St. Simons Island, areas of St. Simons Island, and even Jekyll Island flood in a tropical storm situation. As we get into a Category 1 hurricane, you can see that area increases, including large areas of the city of Brunswick and St. Simons Island. 
By Category 2, the vast majority of the county is flooding, including a lot of those inland communities that we spoke about earlier. In a Category 3 situation, now we have storm surge that's actually pushing out of the western end of the county and into Brantley and Wayne counties to show you how far that storm surge can go inland. And mind you, that's just a Category 3 hurricane. We're just reaching major hurricane status at this point. By Category 4, there's very little of the county that isn't flooded, and that continues with Category 5 status with just a very, very small area along Interstate 95 that doesn't flood. So when we put it all together and look at the county, you can see that virtually all of Glynn County can be potentially be flooded during a uh, hurricane situation, and really even a strong Category 2 hurricane can flood the vast majority of the county. So how deep would that water be? What we're looking at now is a landmark that everybody's familiar with, the old Welcome Center over on US-17 and the Torres Causeway. In a Category 1 hurricane, the water in that location would be 3.2 feet above ground level. When we get to a Category 2 hurricane, that goes to 9.0 feet. In a Category 3 hurricane, you can see it's up on the roof at 13.3 feet above ground. In a Category 4, 17.6 feet, and in a Category 5, 21.4 feet. So you can see we can get extremely deep water depths across the Glen County area. So in summary, the shape of the coastline, the shallow offshore waters, and the estuary system all combine to make Glen County an extremely dangerous storm surge or storm tide location. Flooding begins with a strong tropical storm and rapidly increases for Category 1 and Category 2 storms. By Category 3, very little of the county will not be flooded, and that includes inland locations such as Everett and Thalman. Water deaths will be great across many parts of the county, and for these reasons we ask you to please heed the advice of public officials and emergency management. If you're asked to evacuate, please get out. Thank you very much, and I hope you have enjoyed this briefing.